density of technology. The measurement data ended up with Christina Zindela at the Institute of Hydraulic Engineering and Water Resources Management. She is a mathematician and, as part of her doctoral thesis, is working on the complex flow conditions in Gorba's hydraulic constructions. We have completed several trials and noted the changes to the riverbed. Here you can see a cross-section before the construction of the channel. You can see that it's pretty even. After the installation of the channel and after a tremendous flood, the riverbed changed like this. You see here very strong dynamics within the riverbed. In this area, potholes were formed that are very good for the fish because here they find calm resting places. And what is more, the riverbank stayed sound so it was safe from the flood water. The profile of the Moor riverbed after it has been changed by the channel now looks like a natural river profile as drawn by Victor Schauberger in the 30s. Christina Zindela does not just sit at the computer. Here she takes precise measurements at another of Ottmar Gorba's river construction sites. In the Stubmingbach brook he built a kind of stairway, a pendulum channel, a new building method for managing a steep gradient in which the sections of the riverbed restore its original swinging movement to the water. Bei Hochwasser kommt es zu Eindrehungen. With floods it swirls inwards. And instead of the swinging movement, it develops a flowing plume, a plant of water. That means that I have a convex flow pattern, contrary to the conventional chutes where you have a concave flow profile that attacks the banks on its edges. This is going to be tested now at the Hydraulic Engineering Laboratory of Graz University of Technology with a 1 to 10 scale model. It is 3 meters wide and 18 meters long. After it is built, there will be a series of tests, for example flood simulation. For the first time, Schauberger's methods for the regulation of flowing water are going to be subjected to sophisticated tests at the renowned Institute of Hydraulic Engineering. The head of the institute is Professor Gerald Zenz. We would like to find out more about nature, especially nowadays, when we attach particular importance to the natural environment, to natural water runoff, and we have a specific scientific interest in considering energy flow. And so we are completely in tune with Schauberger when we say we want to find out how nature works. We want to study and learn about different volumes of water, its effect on the stability of the riverbed. Can we let different quantities of water generate energy in a controlled way? As engineers, it's our job to make things safe so that even with floods there is no danger. The river and its banks are not damaged and the population is safe. In practice, the pendular chute has already proved itself. The tests on the scale model are to give us a sound scientific basis, not least for the construction of more new channels. And the großen Tullen. On the Großen Tulln, near the Wienerwald in Neulenkbach, an old weir system is to be replaced by a pendular chute as part of the restoration project. This will enable the fish to move freely through the waters again. And at the same time, a forest is planned on the floodplain. And in this alluvial forest, a Viktor Schauberger Park is to be established. A pendulous chute in a Schauberger Park would be the crowning achievement of Ottmar Gorba's professional career. Here he analyzes the electromagnetic frequencies in the water of the pendulous chute with a new measuring instrument. Different aspects of his hydraulic engineering measurements have already been the subject of theses at the Graz and Braunschweig University of Technology. The time finally appears to be ripe for a Schauberger-style river regulation system. Very early in his career as a forester, 
Victor Schauberger recognized the great significance of the woodland in the never-ending water cycle. According to Schauberger, temperature differences play a crucial role in this process. In the shade of trees, the forest soil stays relatively cool. When warm rainwater hits the cooler soil, it sinks into the ground more easily, replenishes the water table and comes back up to the Earth's surface some time later. It evaporates, clouds form and then rains down again. Schauberger calls this the complete or full water cycle. But the full cycle is increasingly disrupted, for example by forest clearance. Without the tree covering, the ground is now warmer than the rain falling onto it. The rainwater does not penetrate into the ground, but flows along the surface into brooks and rivers, causing floods. On the other hand, the water table sinks. In summer, this surface water often evaporates from there, causing clouds to form and so leading to more rainfall. One flood leads to the next. Schauberger calls this the half-water cycle. On a hot plate, it can be seen in a dramatic demonstration how the drops of water roll off. In a similar way, it can also be observed on hot asphalt. Today, this is known as the problem of sealing of natural surfaces. Today, basically, water goes through only half of the water cycle. It can no longer penetrate into the ground, stay there and regenerate. Viktor Schauberger wanted to solve this problem mechanically and so developed a machine for the production of spring water-like drinking water. In 1935, he obtained a patent for it. In this machine, the water would go through the whole cycle again, the water is cleaned, cooled down, run through vortices, enriched with minerals, and then it comes out of the machine like fresh spring water, like the water we know from our mountains. Victor Schauberger believed that without a healthy woodland, there is no healthy water which he called the blood of the earth. The shade-giving canopy of natural mixed woodlands allows an incomparable variety of species to flourish in the understory. A thick humus layer develops. A good woodland soil is a good water reservoir. It can retain up to 90% of the rainwater that falls upon it and so dramatically reduces the risk of flooding and erosion. A healthy woodland soil can absorb six times more water than bare ground. The cooling shade of the trees is just as important for a river. If humans do not interfere, the shade providers grow by themselves on the riverbanks. Victor Schauberger was probably one of the first people to talk of the dying forests. As early as the 1920s, he warned about radical deforestation and the replanting of trees in plantation monoculture. It is a tragic consequence of Victor's life's work that his ingenious water channels led to the massive deforestation that took place in Austria and elsewhere. If one cuts a swathe into the wood, then the trees which were previously in the middle of the wood immediately become border trees. They are suddenly exposed to direct sunlight and their bark gets scorched. These border trees are badly damaged. This was a problem that Victor Schauberger also described. Is it a coincidence that the soil is dry at the edge of this wood? As with river regulation, Schauberger's insights into forestry are more relevant than ever. From forestry, it is only a small step to agriculture. Victor Schauberger saw a cause of declining yields in agricultural machinery made of iron. Basically, Victor considered the formation of rust in the water or the soil to be a life-destroying process. For this reason, he turned to the noble metal copper. Victor and his son Walter Schauberger obtained many patents for agricultural implements made out of copper. Instead of rust from the iron, copper and copper alloys contain trace elements which are brought directly into the soil through abrasion. 
Susanna Niedermeyer has been using copper tools in her garden for several years. On a small scale, she observed similar results to those documented in the 1940s in large-scale field trials in the Salzburg region and the Tyrol. An increase in soil fertility. Susanna Niedermeyer tests the spade, comparing an iron spade and a copper spade. Well, with the copper spade, I have to say, it just goes into the ground more easily. With copper tools, it seems that the trace elements also get into the soil. It seems to me that the soil in the whole garden has become homogeneous, so we don't have so much trouble with snail damage. It simply makes the work a lot easier. I recommend it. Victor Schauberger developed a special plough for loosening the soil which turned the soil inwards, centripetally, rather than outwards, centrifugally. Unfortunately, there is only one model of the spiral plough, also known as the bio-plough. Klaus Rauber of the Association for Implosion Research in the Schwarzwald explains how it works. With his bio-plow, Viktor Schauberger copied the way of a mole, faithful to his principle, comprehend and copy nature. This plow works like a mole, which moves the soil centripetally and so moves through it with hardly any resistance. Electron microscope photographs have recently shown that shark skin has a similar structure, enabling the shark to plow its way through the water with hardly any frictional resistance. Viktor Schauberger certainly had not seen such pictures in his time. This plough turns the soil twice, first by turning it at this edge and then turning it back again so that the layering of the earth remains intact. The merits or demerits of ploughing in agriculture is ever more frequently debated. Victor Schauberger's backwards turning plough could be the way to leave microorganisms in the soil layer where they belong. The Kudo antelope horn is an outstanding ear trumpet for sound amplification. But Victor Schauberger was interested in another characteristic. For him, the Kudo horn was the ideal model for water pipes because of its twisted spiral shape. In many countries, Victor and Walter Schauberger obtained patents for their spiral pipes. Such pipes are not easy to make. Felix Hediger of the Association for Implosion Research heats up copper pipes in order to bend them. With a roller he made himself, he can twist the now flexible copper pipe. Another variant is a pipe which is not twisted, but dented, the so-called Neumann pipe. Despite the fact that the pipe is straight, the water whirls in on itself. The water flows in a spiral space curve. In Victor Schauberger's view, the ideal water flow pattern. The Association for Implosion Research produces not only spiral pipes, but builds whole apparatuses following Victor Schauberger's original plans. Here is the latest version of a sophisticated water appliance to revitalize distilled water from the year 1958. With this sophisticated device, Viktor Schauberger attempted to combine several technical aspects. He built a small-scale wave diaphragm. There the water pulses through and meanders in the same way as it does in a natural water course. The hole is covered by a lid so that light is excluded. Carbonic acid is added to the airspace. The carbonic acid is incorporated into the water during the vortexing process and high quality salts are also added to it. The entire process has to run approximately half an hour with a positive temperature gradient. That is, the water has to cool down to 4 degrees Celsius. After half an hour, the water is taken out. 
It should rest a day until it has the maturity of good spring water. Possibly even, we'll test this in experiments, the maturity of healing water. Back to Felix Hediger. He builds his spiral 